The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod, and we're coming to you from the Warner Center in Woodland Hills, California. This is the home for the corporate headquarters for CARD, the Center for Autism and Related Disorders, and it's also the home for Autism Live. We're thrilled to be with you here today, and we're going to be with you for the next hour talking about autism from a 360-degree perspective, looking at all the different things that we all are interested and in having to deal with. Our main mission here is to provide you with information and inspiration. And we know that this is a big, beautiful community that's rich and full of lots of people with lots of different concerns and issues. So we try to cycle through a lot of different topics, but if you want to, us to talk about a specific thing, there's a way for you to, uh, to talk to us and let us know your thoughts and feelings and questions and concerns. And Traven is going to show you some of the different ways that you can connect with us here. I want to point out that they're all free free and every way that you can watch the show currently is free. So while he's showing you um, these different ways that you can connect with us, I want to remind you that our homepage is autism-live.com. All of our videos are available from that site now. You can cycle through different topics, um, different guests that we have that are recurring guests that may, maybe you just want to watch the playlist having to do with Temple Grandin. I wouldn't blame you because it's fabulous, but I would also tell you that there's other fabulous things there too. Check out the Ask Dr. Doreen's. That'll really blow your mind. And then there are so many other things. If you like a little lighter fare, like if you want the recipes, uh, check out our uh, recipe uh, playlist. That's uh, we, Our show that we do here is called What's Left. Uh, and that's with Lisa Ackerman from Taka. And you can get some great recipes even for your kiddo that's gluten-free, casein-free. So that and much, much more is available from the website. You can also chat with us directly from that site. The chat is at the very bottom of the page. You click on the little red dot that says chat. It opens up a chat box and you and I can have a conversation in real time, but you can also talk with our experts, which is really cool. Um, but while we're talking about experts, let me just say that while we have many experts that are on the show, I'm not one of them. Uh, I'm a mom. I have uh, a kiddo who was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half. I am smiling. Look at me. I'm sitting upright and I'm smiling. That was many, many years ago. And look, it was hard in the beginning and we didn't know what to do. Uh, we found out what to do and we did it. And we did it as much as we possibly could. Of course, I'm talking about really good quality ABA, but we also did dietary uh, intervention and we did enrichment. We did a bunch of different things. I can tell you, we didn't have two nickels to rub together. And so I know for a lot of you, it feels like, oh, I can't afford this. Welcome to that club because nobody can. Nobody can afford this, but there's help. There's insurance coverage now, and there are grants, and there are different ways. And please don't let money stop you from getting the help that either you need or that your child needs. And let me just point out, when I, I always say that I'm talking to the larger autism community, and of course, that starts with our individuals who are on the autism spectrum. So if you're a self-advocate and you're watching the show, welcome, because we try to make this show as interactive as possible and to have as much of um, that the viewpoint of the person on the spectrum taken into consideration as we possibly can. Uh, yeah, I'm a host who's not on the spectrum, but man, I care about what you need and you want because I have uh, a teenager who's on the spectrum. He's about to be an adult on the spectrum. So that's uppermost in my mind, right? But I don't forget where we came from and that I had a two and a half year old who wasn't speaking and was hitting his head on the kitchen floor. And I want to help those parents too. So our community, our larger community, includes 
first and foremost, the individuals on the spectrum, then everybody who loves and cares about them. That includes the parents and the grandparents and the teachers and the therapists and everybody along the way. So if you fit into that category that you're on the spectrum or you care deeply about somebody on the spectrum, getting to the progress that they so richly deserve, then you're a part of my tribe. Come on down. We're all here together and I want us to get there. This show is meant to be the information and the inspiration to help you to get to where you want to go because it's not one size fits all, right? Si se puede, we can do this together. Take my hand, we will get there. And we're getting there. We're not to the promised land yet, but in, and remember, even when they got to the promised land, there were no curtains, there were no buildings. They still had to build it, right? We're on our way there still, but we're gonna get there. Uh, si se puede. Okay, so uh, we like to start the day off with something we fondly refer to as the jargon of the day. This is when we take on one word, one phrase, one acronym. We try to figure out what in the hey nani nani are those experts talking about and what does it have to do with us and how's it going to help us, right? Uh, that's really the thing because if it's not going to save me time and money, why do I need to learn something new? That's where I'm coming from. But you got to make friends with the jargon because if you don't, it costs you time and money. So today's jargon term is generalization. Okay, now here's what we do when we do jargon. First, we give you the actual definition, which I take great joy in making fun of. Because really, what else can you do? And then we give you a working definition, and I take great joy in making our experts break out into hives, because it's not maybe exactly, you know, but enough so that we can understand it. And then I try to break it down for you a little bit so that we get a toehold in there. If you don't get it the first time, don't freak out. That's why we go back over these terms every so often, because, you know, the first time you get it and you go, I don't quite get it, but then you'll see it. And you'll go, huh, that's that thing she was talking about. And then the next time you hear it, you go, no, I've got it this time, right? That's very typical. So don't beat yourself up if it still doesn't make sense to you when we're done. Okay, so commence the uh, making fun. Let's look at the actual definition of generalization. The occurrence of relevant behavior under different non-training conditions, for example, across subjects, settings, people, behaviors, and or time, without the scheduling of the same events in those conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Let's applaud. What did that mean? <laughs> what on earth did that mean? I, I, honestly, it just makes me so crazy when you, at least the, the one thing about this definition that they didn't do is just keep saying generalization over and over again, which I hate that when they do that, but it might as well have, because I, I know what all those words mean by themselves, but together, what? Huh? Huh? Okay, uh, so unattractive. All right, let's go on to our working definition now. Let's see if we can make heads or tails. Being able to apply what has been learned in new ways or situations that were never taught. Okay, I got a little bit more information here. Um, so now let's take it to an actual circumstance. All right, the one that really applies to everybody is toilet training. There are a lot of people out there who are like, I need to toilet train my child. And somebody just the other day said, I need help with toilet training. And I went through a very quick uh, Fox and Azrin uh, that probably made Fox and Azrin break out into hives on, the, on Facebook, I think it was, not YouTube. Um, okay, so we know the procedure for teaching toilet training. And if you are unaware of this, let me enlighten you that they've cracked the code on toilet training. Fox and Azrin has put together a protocol and it's just so effective and people keep trying to do it in a different way or quicker or see or the, can we take some steps out of it. And, and so far, everybody's still pretty convinced that Fox and Azrin is the thing that works and it works the fastest and they keep trying to make a better mousetrap, but not yet, okay? But Fox and Azrin, if you do it, works, right? But here's the deal. There's a part to any skill that you're going to teach that you have to plan for this thing called generalization. Because you can teach someone how to pee in the toilet. You can teach them how to poop in the toilet. And you do it the Fox and Azrin method. Great. And a lot of people do this. And the child can do that. Wonderful. But then, and they learn to do it at home. And everything's going along well. But then they go on vacation. And they're on vacation for four days and they notice the child hasn't pooped. 
the whole time the child hasn't pooped and what and they realize oh and and they're at school and they won't poop at school and they won't poop at aunt betty's house because they're tied to that toilet they only want to poop in that toilet and maybe it's a function of inflexibility maybe it's a function of that the handle works differently at school because all toilets are different right they're all kind of the same but they're all kind of different maybe the tile is different and it's echo, it's more echo in in there so it throws them off and they can't relax to poop see if we plan for generalization generalization is teaching someone the potty training protocol but planning so that they won't just be able to do it in one toilet with one person on one time of the day we want them to be able to poop in all toilets if they're in a, a airport in singapore we want them to be able to poop just like they do at home right i know i'm saying poop a lot but um, it's this way with anything, right? So what we would do is we always want to plan for generalization before we start teaching a lesson. So we go, all right, we're going to teach it this way, but how are we going to get it from here to all the places that we aren't going to be able to teach? This, everything is this way, the color red. Think about how many shades of red and you're going to teach the color red to a child and you got to teach it to them expressively, you got to teach it to them receptively, all these different things. And then you got to teach the, the shades of red you're never going to be able to teach it all. So what we do is we teach one thing and plan for generalization. So we teach it and we have the protocol for teaching it, but we have a plan so that they're going to be able to see that red comes in all different colors and shapes and sizes, right? But by the time we're done with the lesson, they understand red completely. They understand how to poop and pee in a different toilet. They understand how to drive on different roads, not just in the parking lot. Every lesson needs to get to the point where they can do it wherever they are, whenever, with whoever, right? That's generalization. So, for instance, when you're teaching potty training, you start with one toilet and you set up that bathroom and it's all wonderful and great. As soon as they can do it in that toilet, what do you do? You take them to another toilet and you do the same thing there. And then you take them to another toilet. And for some kiddos, maybe it takes four toilets, but now they sort of get it. They're like, oh, this is something I do in these things that are shaped like this. Some of them are white, some of them aren't, right? Uh, some of, the, you know, there are square toilets, right? Um, and, and it's, you know, like I think I've seen two square toilets in my life, but, you know, we get to the point where we go, it's kind of the same thing though, same sort of concept. You do this, you do that, and, and you're successful right? That's what generalization is. So it's also one of the ways you can tell if you're with a good ABA provider because they sit with you and they say, here's the next lesson that we're going to teach your kiddo. You say, great, everything's wonderful. They're about to go on to the next lesson. And you say, hold up just a second. Can I just know what's our plan for generalization here? And say it exactly that way. So they say, oh, we're going to teach your child how to, you know, fill in the blank, right? And you say, great, wonderful. What's our plan for generalization here? And if they're like, uh, 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 so our plan for, no, that's not your ABA provider. No, 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 no. If they don't plan for it right from the beginning, they should be sitting there and saying to you, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. They should bring it up to you. But if they don't, they might think you don't know what it is. And if you say to them, okay, what's our plan for generalization? And they should go, our plan for generalization is that we're going to do bit, 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 bit. And then you go, okay, okay, that's, this is a good sign. This is a, it doesn't mean that everything else is there, but this is a very good sign of a good ABA provider. So generalization, it's what helps your child get to the point where you can say, by George, I think they've got it. Okay, moving on. Let's go on to our question of the day. Our question today is, I'm waiting for it. I don't remember what it is. What makes you laugh? What makes you laugh? Um, I, you know, I look at my son all the time and what makes him laugh. And it's mostly stuff on YouTube. And we, we go through different phases. There was the screaming goat phase. Have you all have you all seen the screaming goat fa the the screaming goat videos that they set them to music and they'll take like a Celine Dion song and they get to the point where she has to sing really high and then they have the goat scream I'm sorry but we laughed for months and months and months about that then there's one I think it's a sea lion that comes up out of, uh, there, there's like a, uh, you know how they cut the ice fishing holes in the water that are perfect circles and this sea lion comes up 
out of a hole and lands on the thing and it goes Murp. <laughs> and for some reason whenever we're going someplace and we have to get our son to take a picture and he's like doing that fake smile because you know it's hard to like relax and smile and so we're trying to shake him up and get him out of it and um so i will always go stand over somewhere and i'll go Murp, and then it's it then we get the laughter and we get great pictures so what makes you laugh um the things that make me laugh are um and i say this to my son all the time because he asked me once he's like well what makes something funny and i said i think what makes something funny is when it's unexpected but truthful when people tell the truth I, I, the first time i ever went to see a stand-up comedian it was david brenner it was a this is how old i am uh, he was opening for Sonny and Cher. I went to a Sonny and Cher concert and David Brenner was opening and he told a story about making a sandwich and he said, you know how when you go in to get bread out of the bag and you don't want the first couple of pieces because it's like they're, they must not be good and so you reach past those to get the, piece, the pieces of bread that are just past the first two and then you grab those two pieces of bread and as you take it, it makes those first couple uh, flip on their side and now they're off limits, no one will eat those pieces of bread. And I was probably, I think I was eight or nine years old and I laughed so hard because I was like, that's the truth, I've seen, myself do that and adults do that forever and i just thought that was hilarious so that's what makes me laugh is when somebody says something is true but not necessarily the thing you think about very much um and i heard we were in an amphitheater and it was thousands of people who were howling when david brenner said that and i was like oh i want to do that i want to be able to make people laugh like that um which you know as, as some of you know i used to be a stand-up comedian um and it's a glorious thing when you can make people laugh so love uh that that's because we need to laugh don't we need to laugh right now don't you need to laugh aren't there things that you need to laugh about if you can't find what's humorous in your life right now i now do a one woman show uh the autism monologues which is me laughing about all the things that i cried about because i got nothing else to do <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I cried the tears over it and now I got to find the funny in it, y'all. Uh, so anyway, there's that. If you want me to come and do my show, it's the Autism Monologues. If you want me to come to your neighborhood and do it, let me know because I'm booking 2020 right now. All right. So uh, we always have a topic of the week. You ready for the topic this week? Bam, 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 bam. It's a big week this week. Uh, we got a lot going on. And our topic this week is being as happy as you make up your mind to be. You know, um, it was Abraham Lincoln who said most folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. And I think it's true. Um, I, I'm still investigating it, right, for myself. But look, every morning we get up and everything is available to you. You have the exact same number of hours that Mother Teresa had. Um, and you have the ability to be the happiest person you know today. It's true. I mean, think about it, and you may have the most, when I think about the happiest people I know, they're people who do not have the most money in their bank account. They don't necessarily have the healthiest kids, right? Um, th they don't necessarily have, um, you know, uh, are married to the person that, you know, everybody thinks that they should be married to, right? Um, so I don't think any of those, I don't think things, um, or connections are predictors of happiness. Some of the, uh, the least happy people I know are people who you would think, I mean, you know, to my eyes, it looks like they have it all, but they're not happy with it, right? Um, I was just telling the story the other day of the hardest Christmas that I ever went through, which was after my, right after my son had been diagnosed and we didn't have enough money. Like I was sitting there and was like, I don't have enough money to pay the rent um, and to pay for Christmas dinner and to pay for my child's medicine and a toy for my child. Like I got those four things and I for sure don't have enough money to do that and I got no money coming in. So, you know, what am I gonna do? But when I look back on when did I feel the most Christmas spirit? When did I really feel like, wow, the world is 
kind and good it was that Christmas because people came out of the woodwork to help us in unexpected ways and, and places that we didn't ask for help that just showed up, right? And I get all the clamped and I remember being in that Christmas and thinking, wow, you know, I have my kid. He's here and he's going to be okay because we're going to keep doing what we're doing and it's all going to be okay because people care and I was filled with the Christmas spirit. Um, we try to pay that forward every Christmas, um, my family and I, it's one of the reasons why we're so committed to the sensitive Santa um, and we have a guest who's going to be on the show in a little while who's, gonna, who's donated some things to our sensitive Santa because we want to make sure that families uh, that need it here in our area get a wrap toy because it might be the only one that they can afford that year because it's free. Um, so my point is, how happy do you want to be today? And because you can look at all the things that are wrong, those things are always available. But what are the things that are right? And you know this because you've been on the planet for a while, but there is a day that will come that we will look back at even the hardest day we are having right now. And we will think to ourselves, gosh, Look at all the things that we had in that day. Um, you know, I, I have a dear friend um, who her husband died. And, you know, and, and in the end days when he was dying, it was really, really hard. But I remember her saying at some point, I got to remember to be here and appreciate because a day soon is going to come when we're not going to have the hard of going through, you know, him being this way and we won't have him. So I got to remember to enjoy this day as hard as it is. And, you know, none of us knows what's going to happen next. But there's a lot of things right now that we've got. And uh, we just here in Southern California watched a lot of families lose their homes. And uh, one family in particular that just took my breath away, they just made the last payment on the house. Oh my gosh, can you imagine spending 30 years scraping and saving and making all your payments and the party that they had and a week later the whole thing burned to the ground and now they got to build over again, right? And th that family stood there in tears and said, yep, that's, that's really horrible, but we all survived. We, we are reminded today of what's important and we're incredibly grateful that we have what we have. We have a choice today. How happy do you want to be? because you can be as happy as you want to be today. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about. We're running late, so we got to get going with our guests here. First guest up today, we have got the fabulous Amanda Kelly, otherwise known as the Behavior Babe. She's going to be with us. Um, she, uh, it's Dr. Kelly, excuse me, uh, <laughs> Dr. Amanda Kelly. So she's going to be here with us. She is the co-founder and chief clinical officer for DOBE, and she's going to explain to us what that is. And then a little bit later on in the show, we've got Tony Tinner Via, and he is a gentleman who is a self-advocate and a game designer, and he's got a birthday club that you guys are going to want to hear about, plus he's going to explain his game to us, and Capital Keys, and he has uh, graciously donated some for our Sensitive Santa event, which is really super cool. So all of that, plus a little bit more coming up after these messages, stick with us. Hey, I'm Candace Cameron Bray. Tom Berger on. You're watching Autism Live. And you're watching Autism Live. And you're watching Autism Live. You're watching Autism Live. What is autism? 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 I've been asking myself that for a very, very long time. Um, let me think about that one. <laughs> um, trying to uh, just um... let me think. <laughs> oh man, that's a big one. Yes. Uh, autism. Uh, autism is a neurological disorder that affects many of our kids in different ways. It's a learning disability that affects the cognitive functions of the brain. A lot of people have the misconception that it's a disability, and it's really not. I look at it as like a special gift. When one person thinks differently from another. It's an opportunity for everyone to learn to understand someone that's a little different than them. Autism is the ability to educate. They're given so much talent in different areas. To me, autism means a chance to be with and be around people you really care about. Autism is beautiful. It's a way of seeing the world differently. It's always unique, totally intelligent, and 
sometimes mysterious. Happiness that, that, that comes out of my um, son's um, hard work. It's a movement. Unpredictable. That's right. Awesome. Love. The field I want to work in. Laughter, fun, joy. Autism is beautiful to me. I want you to remember these three words. There is hope. provide care services to someone with autism? Recently, more and more children are being diagnosed with the condition and getting the support they need as awareness grows. But what happens to these children as they grow up? It's estimated that over half a million youth with autism will turn 18 in the next decade, and they'll be faced with a very difficult reality. As children with autism grow up, their services start to disappear or become very difficult to access. Things like medical care, mental health counseling, vocational training, and more. All services that are still desperately needed. The loss of support that youth with autism face as they grow up is so severe that it's referred to in the autism community as falling off a cliff. Adults with autism need the same level of support they had as children to avoid falling off the services cliff. Introducing Skills Living the web-based software designed specifically to help transitioning youth and adults with autism so they can avoid the cliff and instead fly to success. With Skills Living, help your learner with autism develop the skills they need in all the critical areas of adult life, including self-control, planning, and problem solving, effective communication, performing life skill tasks for independent living, acquiring and maintaining employment or other meaningful activities, developing and maintaining social skills and relationships, accessing transportation and public services, and being safe. Skills Living includes a comprehensive assessment, a data collection mobile app, behavior intervention plan builder, and automatic progress reporting. It also provides a complete curriculum addressing 16 key areas spanning the entire range of functioning adulthood. Skills Living is easy to use and can be implemented by schools, parents, and autism service providers. Call or click today for your free demo and see how Skills Living can help your learner. And then, voila, your mask is ready to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this activity with me. Until next time, guys, craft on. To find more about skills and to access all of the lessons you saw in today's Smarty, visit skillsforautism.com and click on the parent icon, Skills, the online autism solution. Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm super excited because on the phone right now we have Dr. Amanda Kelly, but uh, we have always known her as Behavior Babe. And hopefully you guys have seen her online as Behavior Babe. She is amazing. She has a bachelor's degree in elementary education, her master's in behavioral education, and her doctorate in behavior analysis. So that's like the trifecta of wonderful when we're talking about kiddos on the autism spectrum. She has worked in every single capacity that there is, everything from paraprofessional to licensed teacher to school counselor, consultant coordinator, and behavior analyst. And over the last two decades, she's worked in every environment imaginable, including in-home settings, public and private schools, resident residential placement. See, there's so many of them, I can't even say it. Uh, community settings and all over the place. And we're excited that she's here with us today to talk about her new position as the co-founder and chief clinical officer of an organization, am I saying it right, Dobie? Yes, Shannon, that's correct, Dobie. So, first of all, welcome, Dr. Kelly. We're thrilled to have, behave your babe, we are thrilled to have <laughs> you here. Um, and so explain what Doby is. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. It's been too long and I can't wait to see you in person, hopefully next time. Yeah. Doby is a new organization that I just co-founded with my business partner, Jay Kateri. It stands for Distinguished Organization of Behavior Enterprises. And to put it simply, we are trying to help organizations that have behavior analysts who are not um, trained as business owners or business owners who are not trained as behavior analysts. And we want to provide and take out some of the, the guesswork of things that should be easy or standardized within organizations and allow people to get back to clinical excellence and really helping out 
all of the clients that they serve. Yeah, I don't think people understand how the genesis of ABA and ABA providers and how much it's changed and and morphed. And, and look, we all prayed for insurance. We all worked hard for insurance to cover ABA, but it's, it's created new issues uh, by being there. And this is a particularly tough thing, and it can be very challenging if there is somebody who is a BCBA and their talent is clinical. Um, you know, they could put themselves out of business very quickly if they're not savvy enough to know how to do this. And then the flip we see is more and more true that people are seeing, oh, this is a a very viable business and wanting to open a business. But if they're not BCBAs, like they don't really understand all that happens. So I, I think what a wonderful thing that you have this and have it available for people. But maybe if you could talk about some of the different, I, I know you probably can't disclose clients, but some of the ways that you've been able to help people. Sure. Um, I like to say that today's problems were yesterday's dreams. So I think that that goes into play when we talk about insurance funding. Um, we did fight really hard for that. It is, I think, a positive thing for our field, for our clients, um, for our consumers, but it does present really unique challenges and barriers. So some of the things that we are able to assist our clients with um, could be as simple as recruiting. You know, how do you find a stellar clinician? How do you find the right agency? So it works in both directions, helping those brand new analysts find environments that are going to give them the professional development, the growth, the experience, and the support that they need. Also, while helping agencies, um, you know, be profitable. We think that you can be profitable and ethical at the same time. Some of the other supports and services we offer are things like marketing. Um, In addition to recruiting, how do you get your image out there is really important. Some people are doing, many people are doing really incredible work but they're not necessarily reaching everybody that they want to reach. Now, we see a ton of wait lists, so some people are not really interested in marketing to new clients, but you want to be making sure that the community knows who you are. You want to make sure that you know new analysts are seeking out your agency or that the really seasoned analysts are, are attracted to your agency. Um, other things that we can support with, billing, credentialing, um, uh, doing walkthroughs, giving feedback, um, providing ethical support, and um, I and by no means mean to be the only, you know, individual providing that support within our agency. We have other experts and we're, we're in talks right now because we're still relatively new with which additional behavior analysts we're going to be able to bring on our team so that we are providing um, a diverse perspective and not just my perspective. It's a very cool thing. So if people are interested in this and, and want to get more information about it, where should they go? Our website is probably the best place to go, or Facebook. You know, I'm a big fan of social media marketing. Our website is dobe-aba.com. So that's dobe-aba for applied behavior analysis.com. Or you can just find us, same thing, um, on Facebook, dobe-aba. Wonderful. And, you know, I the thing that I keep looking at, there, were, there was a period of time, I can remember when the term BCBA was not, it was very uncommon, it wasn't something that you heard about as much. And then more and more uh, funding sources were saying that they were acquiring BCBAs and, and, and we saw universities going, we're, we're going to create a lot more BCBAs. And, and I go to events and I, I see that there are all these young people that are, that are coming through the school system and, and then they have to choose where it is that they're going to go and work. How do you help them to figure out where to go and who to work for? Because they pretty much have their choice. Is that accurate? You know, when I first was looking to pursue behavior analysis myself two decades ago, I used dial-up internet and I looked up any place that had those keywords in the title and I found two, um, you know, two places where I could go work. So again, 20 years ago, one was on the East Coast, one was on the West Coast. I chose the East Coast because at the time closer to my parents, right? The joke's on them because we know now I live in Hawaii, not very close to anybody. Um... (laughs) But now you definitely see that behavior analysts have a choice about where they're going to work. And you also see because there are multiple organizations that they are wanting to be um, standing out. They want to be individualized. They want to be exceptional. So I think in a lot of ways, options exist. But in some places, the bar is pretty high. 
And I know that that can feel inhibitive to a new, um, newly certified or newly credentialed behavior analyst. And um, so we hope to help with things like that. Um, we're also looking at just what's a good fit. You know, what kind of skill sets do you have? What are your personality strengths? Like, and how do we match that to the mission of an organization? What we don't want to see is we don't want to see people, you know, jump in, offer high salaries, but ridiculous caseloads or offered low salaries and not enough support or any combination of those that really aren't honest and transparent. So for us, we're really looking at not, no agency can be everything to everyone. No analyst can be everything to everyone. And just as we're not always the right analyst, an agency may not be right for you. So we hope to help our customers um, and the people who come to us better identify what they're looking for And we're hoping to help agencies better articulate what they offer. Wonderful. Now, does it only work from the end of, do you, are you only hired by an agency to find BCBAs or do you ever, are you ever providing a service to BCBAs to find the right fit? So we're still evolving a lot of this service. As I mentioned, it's a relatively new business. Um, We are looking to help in both directions, but the cost should be on the agency, not the individual. So if an individual were to reach out to us through our website or say, hey, I'm looking for an agency or or an organization, or I'm wondering if there's a place in my area, or I'm moving to a new location, that's often a request that we'll get. We are able to provide them support. And that's not usually at a cost to the individual because that's kind of wrapped up into what the agencies are looking for. And that's actually part of what we're doing to help the agencies find and recruit those individuals. So for you, if a BCBA was getting ready to graduate, say in April or May, you'd love it if they were reaching out to you now or a little bit closer to graduation? I think any time is a good time to kind of put your feelers out and that's how I was or that's how I am when I'm looking for opportunities. Mm-hmm. I'm always kind of looking slightly ahead. Um, I think that that helps people who are trying to plan for transitions. Now, I know for certain agencies, they'll say, you know what, we, we don't, we're not, you know, we got to wait till they have the credentials. And so that's fair. Um, and that might put them at a di- different part in the process, depending on when they um, reach out to us. But we are open to conversations. We are here to help. Um, And we're trying to do it in a way that doesn't break the bank for anybody. And again, allows us all to kind of really focus on clinical care and um, being exceptional business owners for those who who have that skill set. That's not my skill set. Like I tried to have my own ABA agency. I did for a little while here in the island. But it became I I became so worried about fraud and employment records and history and (sighs) HIPAA and I just wanted, to, I just wanted to work on creating programs and um, visually displaying them and working with the parents and helping the teachers. And so that's where finally I feel like I have a good fit where I've um, recruited or solicited the support of a, a business partner who is, you know, excels in business. Um, my business partner owns several businesses, is not a behavior analyst. He does have several children, one on the spectrum. He does own an autism agency, so it gives the insight, um, but I bring the clinical piece to it, and he really balances us out with his business expertise. That's lovely. So again, the website to go to? D-O-B-E, which stands for Distinguished Organization of Behavior Enterprises, dash ABA for Applied Behavior Analysis dot com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I also think that someday, I've never been to Hawaii, and I think I have to put it on my list of places that I must go. You know, I'm just learning the more we put things in our schedule, the more likely they are at least to, um, we're we're to be reminded that we want to do them. So you should plug Hawaii into your schedule, and I'll have a place for you when you're you're ready. All right. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to, I'm making my 2020 schedule right now, so I'm going to, I'm going to, put Hawaii on my agenda. Uh, (laughs) There we go. Thank you so much for all the work that you do and for taking the time to be with us today. Absolutely. And right back at you. Thanks so much, Shannon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, that was Dr. Amanda Kelly, uh, or as we like to call her, the behavior babe. And you can find her on social media, but also in this new enterprise. Uh, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to be back with the fabulous, I don't want to get his name wrong, Tony Tin 
Tinervia. That's I, I probably have gotten it wrong. But he is a wonderful self-advocate and a game creator. He's going to be with us right after these messages. Hi, I'm Lisa Ackerman. Welcome back to Talk of Facts. Um, I, we hear questions all the time, and we want to give you the answers that help make your journey in autism easier and more navigatable. Less than a year ago, we interviewed the top 100 doctors in the United States working with children on the spectrum, and we asked them a question in the cloak of secrecy. What are the top three mistakes parents living with autism do? Number one, and my, the one that makes me laugh the most, is when they use their physician as a marriage and family therapist. <laughs> one, the doctors told me it made them uncomfortable, and two, they were highly unqualified to provide that type of advice. So the night before your physician appointment with your MAPS doctor, get together with your spouse, significant other, and write out the list of the targets and the agenda that you want to cover at the physician's appointment. Get in sync then you'll be definitely spending less time and not making that doctor so uncomfortable. Second thing that was the most common mistakes parents living with autism make is they want to go too fast. And really, you want to pace yourself in the autism journey. We all know that we want to get our kid to be the best they can be and hopefully recover from autism. And what a lot of the doctors have told me is that you want to really pace yourself, one, to let the labs be your guide, and to work with your physician on the prioritization and the, the delivery of the different medical interventions. The third most common mistake they felt families made was giving up too soon. And what you need to know is they're invested, um, they're looking at wanting to get the best from your child. But I tell you that when I got that and consolidated the 100 interviews with these physicians, most of the doctors who brought that up had tears in their eyes. Um, they want you to know that they're in the fight with you and they want you to know that hope is really real. It may take hard work and it may take time, but to not give up and to stay in the game. So let TACA help you. We'll have some more TACA facts for you in the future, real questions and real answers for the autism journey. Welcome back. We have joining us Tony. And Tony, I don't know how to say your last name. How do you say it? Yeah, you say it, you did say it right before. I did? Tinervia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Tony's mom is there too. Hi, Tony's mom. Hi. <laughs> we're Evelyn. We're th uh, Evelyn. We're thrilled to have both of you here on the show. And Tony, uh, we understand that you are someone who uh, you consider yourself a self advocate. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you have created a game called Capital Keys that we're going to talk about. You are the community outreach manager for a nonprofit, and you have been running something called the Autism Birthday Club for a long time. What do you want to talk about first, the game or the birthday club? Um, I talk. I talk about the birthday club first. Okay, let's talk about the birthday club. So what is this? Well, pe uh, people can get on and they can um, sign up on the form. Uh, to them, uh, to them dot com. Okay. And when they do, then they tell you when their birthday is. And I see one of these fabulous birthday cards. Is this what you send them on their birthday? Uh, yes. And I, I do sign it. Wonderful. And, um, I, I do have Asperger syndrome, so. So uh, why I, was this important to you, Tony? Why did you decide that? Because you, you've been doing this for a while, right? How long have you been doing that? 2018. Well, I did it. I did it in 2018. Yeah, and you've got over 650 members now. Why was this so important for you to do? Um, so uh, autism families will know they're being accepted. Yeah, we know a lot. We see a lot of stories of kids that on their birthday, you know, they're they're not. Sometimes, unfortunately, our kiddos aren't invited to parties and. And they invite people to come to their party, and we've seen that some kids struggle with that. And to have a birthday card arrive in the mail on your birthday is a really cool thing. 
And, yeah. and so that's just one of the cards. I know earlier you showed me another card. Can we see? And and do you make these cards, Tony? Um, uh, I work at uh, Soaring Soaring on Hope. You can see it. Uh -huh. And uh, um, my uh, my boss Jessica Dyer uh, see had them printed for me. I love it. I absolutely love it. I like it. the idea. It's so nice. Well, it's such a feel-good thing. Uh, and I go, uh, I go around uh, uh, Tulsa area, and I get, um, I get uh, freebies to put in the birthday card. Oh, that's like um, uh, Chick Fil A has um, donated, and. Um, I don't know if you've heard of um, uh, Raising Canes. I haven't heard of that. Uh, it's a chicken uh, chicken fingers. Uh, they're getting them in California. And so you put a gift card when you can get them. Um, yes. You get donations into some of the cards, which is super wonderful. So for people to sign their themselves up or to sign their child up, they, they go to autismbirthdaycard.com. And is there a cost uh, to sign up? No, it, it's um, Autism Birthday Club. Birthday um, Club, excuse me. Autism uh, Birthday Club. Oh, um, well, one moment. I'll be right back. Okay, he's going to go and check that, but we think that it's AutismBirthdayClub.com. So, Evelyn, while you're there, how proud are you of your son for creating this? Well, I'm very proud of him, and especially uh, the game, because this game uh, was started when he was uh, out on his own, and uh, he uh, started with pictures and uh and uh, other things about the game. And um, he said that uh, uh, they couldn't keep going on because he didn't have the money to, uh, to start it. Yeah. So when he moved back home, we got the game started. Well, and I'm proud of both of you. That's an amazing story. So did you find the it, website? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's Archid and Bronte Club. OK. It, uh, Dot com. Okay, autismbirthdayclub.com. Mm -hmm. Or uh, it could be so, Soaring on Hope uh, Therapy.com. Okay, Soaring on Hope Therapy.com. Both of those they can do. Okay, so that's a wonderful thing. But And your mom was just talking about the game. Let's talk about Capital Keys. You've got one there with you, right? Yes, it, it's it called. Um, Look at it's that. Uh, keys to the Capitol. Keys to the Capitol. Okay. So, and we understand that you're, this is something that was a big deal to you that you really love, um, mm -hmm. the, the capitals of the state, right? What, and tell us what the keys are. Uh, you know, when um, people get like keys to the cities, uh, I came up with that idea. I love uh, it. So, and it's, what's the uh, goal? Yeah. In fact, it's um, um, to collect the most uh, uh, capital keys um, card. Okay. Right here. There, there, there is 50. So okay. we would, uh, if we pick this card, uh, we would have to start off in your own home capital. You know, your own home capital. Uh, well, I live in the state of California, so Sacramento is my capital. Yes. Uh -huh. So you would have to go all the way to um, Kentucky. I would have to come to Kentucky. To, and, and so I don't, uh, is Topeka the capital of Kentucky? It's Frankfurt. Oh, see, I, <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah it is, most people don't know the capital of um, uh, Kentucky. I was thinking Kansas, but so it's Frankfurt for for Kentucky. I, yeah, was, I said Topeka. They, most people say um, Louisville or Lexington. I say um, I say Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs>
<laughs> That's very funny. So yeah. <laughs> in order to get the key to the Capitol, you need to know what the capital of the state is. Is that correct? Uh, no, you just uh, memorize. Oh, you okay. Memorize the Capitol. It, well, I would think this helps it, to memorize. Look at how, yeah. like, how professional this box is. Uh, this is amazing. Okay, tell us all about it. It is a base game, and um, up to six people, um, up to six people can play. I and and so uh, how did you come up with this, Tony? Well, in 1991, I. Um, I thought about it, but then um, we didn't get a patent. So um, I guess 25 years later, you know, I, I found that I had um, Asperger's syndrome and when I was 58 years old. Wow. And I did keep, I, I did keep uh, the portfolio on, on the game and I had it. Uh, I wanted to prove that uh, autism can invent too, and uh, we did. Uh, we did see uh, Temple Grandin in March. And did she get to see your game? Yeah, I, I gave her uh, my game. I'll bet she loved it. Huh? Yeah, I uh, sent a picture. Uh, I guess that's our portfolio uh, photo. Amazing. So is this a game available yet for us to buy or is it about to be available? It is. It's um, on Amazon.com. Okay. And so we should look for Keys to the Capital. Who's the company that is is that it's under? Oh, um, my publisher is uh, Golden Bear Studios. What an amazing, amazing thing. Mom, yeah. Mom, you just have to be so excited about this, aren't you? Oh, I've um, always loved the game. I think um, we've played it a hundred times. No, we play it more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so when you go to, uh, is it Soaring, uh, Soaring for Hope, On Hope? What's the Soaring? Well, yeah, you can go um, SLH Kid. Soaring Hope Therapy. Oh, um, we've got it on the screen there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, do they no, do they play no. it there? Yeah, I, I don't think that's it. Uh, I think it's uh, on Hope dot com Autism Birthday Club. All right, we're gonna check that. We're Traven's on it. He's gonna check that. But do they play the game at Soaring on Hope? Uh, no. Uh, someday I hope. I can play my boss. Oh, that would be fun. That would be very I, fun. I, yeah, I do, I do have a copy of it. Um, I work there uh, part time. Uh, I go in and uh, do what they call it, um, uh, twice a week. And I know uh, one of the things that you had said to our producer was that you wanted to make sure that you had an opportunity to tell all the people who are watching, all the things that are possible after a diagnosis. What what do you want to say to the young kids that might be watching? Or to their parents? Uh, uh, never give up on your dreams. Absolutely. Because, you know, this is a dream of mine for um, maybe 25 years. I love the artwork. Yeah, I kept most of it. I kept the... Um, drawing plans in my drawer for maybe 25 years. Wow. So I'm, I'm happy we we did manufacture it. And hopefully there'll be a uh, second edition. And um, Golden Bear Studios says that um, Encyclopedia Britannica wow. is interested in it. You're, so you're keeping some maybe good there'll be, there. Maybe there'll be a license on it. Very cool. And so is there, I, I know you said there might be a second edition, but are, have you thought about yeah. maybe creating an entirely different game or is this the one for you? I have a different game. Uh, they already, they already have the blueprint to it. Oh, it, wow. Um, I, 
I did name it um, Coast the Coast Adventure. I love it. Be I would have um, fifty eight the most popular cities in the USA and uh, twenty five national parks. Wow. Well, Tony, we we put out a toy guide every year, and I didn't know about this when we were uh, choosing our winners next year, so we got to stay in contact for next year's toy guide, okay? Okay, that'd be great. Because um, we love board games. And they want me to go to um, New York City for the um, toy fair in February. Yay! Are you going to go? Well, <laughs> you going to go? Um, I don't know. All right. Uh, if they pay for me, if, there you if go. they expensive, and here's that. here's what I'm going to go to you today. Okay. There's a um, we're having an event. It's called Superhero Bath, and it's a sensory cafe. I love it. And um. And uh, my boss, Jessica Dyer, uh, she does do events monthly. How for, wonderful. For family, not just for the uh, autistic child. How wonderful is that? Well, I like I just I'm so excited for you. I think this is so wonderful. Uh, I know that your publisher gave us some of the games to give away at our Sensitive Santa and we're deeply, deeply appreciative. I can't wait yeah. to play the game. And it's available on Amazon. So people should go and find Keys to the Capital on Amazon. I am thinking that every classroom in the United States should have one of these games. Yes, I, I did donate to the local elementary school. Well, I think that they should buy them. Schools buy games and toys, and I think they should buy them from you and help support mm -hmm. your business. Yeah, and I, I got... Um, I got letters from the uh, classroom thanking me for um, donating the games to them. How amazing. So I think about 25 students wrote me um, thank you notes. Oh, how fabulous. Well, Tony, we, unfortunately we're out of time, but we want to say again that if people want to sign their child up for the birthday club, they can do that. But everybody should go to Amazon and get, it's not too early to be buying Christmas presents and Hanukkah presents, get keys to the Capitol, especially if you have a kiddo that you're, is in grade school and is trying to learn the, the Capitals, this will help them along the way. But this is a good refresher for everybody, and it looks like it's a great oh, yeah, bunch it's, of fun. It's good for, it's good for adults, too. Yes. I I think it's uh, well. I know, it's great. I, yeah, I know all the, all the capitals. <laughs> I am geographically challenged, so I need this game to brush up on them. <laughs> so, uh -huh. and Evelyn, I want to thank you for raising a, a scholar and a gentleman. He's something else, and I, I, you said you were so proud of him. I can understand completely why. We want to thank you guys for being with us. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, bye. What an inspirational story. So that's Keys to the Capitol. Um, you can get that on Amazon and, and sign up your child for a free birthday card. I mean, my goodness, how could you possibly go wrong? So autismbirthdayclub.com. We are totally out of time. We've got a big week for you here at Autism Live. Tomorrow is a best of episode that should be really fun. And I think that Traven's going to put some Halloween elements in that. And then on Wednesday, we're told that we have Dr. Doreen Grampiche. On Thursday, on Halloween, we're having a very special show <laughs> at, uh, where I will be in costume. And believe me, it's going to be worth seeing. And our special guest for the entire hour, Matt Asner from the Ed Asner Family Center, Nava Paskowitz Asner. And they're going to be here with, I don't know whether they're going to be in costume or not, but they're going to be talking about their very big event, the Ed Asner 90th birthday party, which we're going to be live on the red carpet. I mean, just stop. Just stop. I think I'm getting to interview Dick Van Dyke. I might keel over and die. I'm so excited. Um, plus, Cloris Leachman, I mean, I know for some of you who are young and you're like, who's that? Um, but Darius Rucker from uh, Hootie and the Blowfish is going to be there. And everybody knows who Mark Hamill is. Um, he's Luke. 
uh, use the fork, Luke. That's what I always used to say to my son. Use the fork, Luke. Um, <laughs> use the force. Uh, Mark Hamill, Star Wars. Um, and that's just some of the people that are going to be there. Rosie O'Donnell's going to be there. Fellow autism mom. Uh, we've got all of these people. We're going to be on the red carpet with them. It's going to be so exciting. And your ticket is through Autism Live. You're going to want to be there. And they're going to talk about the people that we're going to get to interview. So don't miss that. That's Halloween. And then big la show um, on Friday. Friday. Can't remember, but I know it's a big show, so be there with us. <sighs> All right. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now.